Hi, everybody. Sorry I can't be there today, but through the magic of technology, I can kind of be there with you. Yesterday, on Thursday, you guys all did the molar mass worksheet, the 20 problems of finding the mass of one mole of a substance, and you did a wonderful job on that. Um, I think you guys are feeling confident about your ability to do it, and that's great. Um, you just took a quiz. Hopefully, you nailed it and feel good about it. So now let's use that to take things a little further. So this worksheet, um, period two, I know you grabbed it on the way out the door. Period four, I'm not sure if you got it or not, but it was on the website, the calendar, and I hope you got it. So let's take a look at this particular problem right here. Just make sure that we're inking properly. And okay, how many moles of magnesium are there in 10 grams of magnesium? Well, the first thing we need to do is write down what we know. We know grams of magnesium. We're told that right there. We want to turn this into moles of magnesium. We know that this is how many moles. So here's our conversion. We have one arrow, so that means one sandwich. Grams, magnesium on bottom, the first piece of bread on bottom. Moles of magnesium on top, second piece on top. Now we need to put a number in here. Remember, we're building a tool that we can use for converting. It's always easier to put a one mole than it is for gram, because we can go one mole is a certain number of grams of magnesium. How many? The old periodic table shows us that 24.3 grams is equal to a mole of uh, that. So over here, we come back, and now we know that this is 24.3 grams. So now what we've done is we've built a tool. And now what we do is we use the tool by multiplying what we started with. We knew that. That was our given. So we built a tool. Now use the tool. 10.00 grams of magnesium. If we multiply this straight through, remember it's not cross multiplication. It's multiplying straight across. You can think about this as a fraction of 10 grams over 1. First thing we got to do is check do the units cancel out? Grams of magnesium, grams of magnesium. What are we left with? Moles of magnesium. Does that answer the question? In this case, yes, it does. So now we do the math 10 times 1 divided by 24.3. And the old calculator says that is 0 0.4115 moles of magnesium. Now we need to ask ourselves, does that make sense? Oh, by the way, this is two sig figs. I'm sorry, three. Let's call this 0 0.412. We'll round that guy up to give us three sig figs moles of magnesium. And it should make sense because it's 24 grams for one mole. This should be less than half because 10 is less than half of 24.3 grams. So, yay, we've done right. Or one correctly. Good job. Now let's go to the next one. Um, as we go down, let's make some room here. This uh, number two, you know what? I think you can skip that for now. It's a little freaky. I do want you to try it later. But now let's go to the ones that I think you do know how to do, like sulfuric acid. Um, of course, you got to know what that is. Sulfuric acid is H2SO4. So, what you got to do is figure out what this is. So, this is H. There's two of them there. There's S in, in this compound. And there's one of them. And there's O, and there are four of them, four oxygens. Two hydrogens, one sulfur, four oxygens. Hydrogen weighs one gram per mole. Sulfur weighs 32 grams per mole. And oxygen weighs, we know this is 16 grams per mole. I'm going to move all this. That's better. Okay, so we have two hydrogens, one gram apiece, each mole. One sulfur, each mole of it weighs 32 grams. Four oxygens, each mole weighs 16 grams. So now we know that two times one, the total mass of hydrogen is two grams. The total mass of sulfur is 32 grams. And the total mass of oxygen is 4 times 16, which is 64 
grams, and we add all that up. There's an 8, and there's a 9, 98 grams. And now we can say that sulfuric acid, H2SO4, has a mass of 98 grams per mole. All right, so far so good. Okay, so that stuff helped us practice the things we learned yesterday. But let's take a look at number two. This seems a little bit new and maybe a little scary right now. But I think you find out that it's not really. Here's the deal. We want to know how many atoms of oxygen are there in this many moles of sodium sulfate. Now we know that every one mole of this stuff, it's sodium, two atoms in a molecule, or two moles of sodium atoms in every mole of sodium sulfate. There's some sulfur. There's one atom in every molecule of it, or one mole of sulfur in every mole of sodium sulfate. There's some oxygen. There's four oxygen atoms in every molecule of sodium sulfate, or um, four moles of oxygen atoms in every one mole of sodium sulfate. So what we know here are the moles of Na2SO4. We want to turn it into moles of... Oops, I don't mean that. What I mean is... Okay, what I mean is uh, not moles, rather. Let's get rid of that. Um, sorry, I'm gonna... sorry, we want to turn the moles of sodium sulfate into atoms of oxygen. I don't know about you, but I don't know how to do that right away. But I do know that in every mole of sodium sulfate, I know how many moles of oxygen atoms are there. So what I can do is I can go from moles of sodium sulfate to moles of oxygen atoms to plain old atoms of O. Stick with me. This makes sense. So we've got one, two conversions. That's two sandwiches. First one, moles of Na2SO4 on bottom, moles of O on top. First piece of bread on bottom, second piece of bread on top. Next conversion, moles of O atoms on bottom, atoms of O on top. This might seem weird, but we'll use it a bunch of times and it'll make you feel better. So what we know over here is that for every one mole of sodium sulfate, there are four moles of oxygen atoms. That might freak you out. How do we know that? Because it's Na2SO4. Every molecule has four oxygen atoms, and it stands to reason that if you have a whole mole of these molecules, you'll have four moles of these. So one mole of sodium sulfate gives you four moles of oxygen. This is where it gets a little weirder at first, but not really. We know one mole of oxygen atoms is a certain number of them. What's that number? You know the number. It's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So we're going to be multiplying straight across here. We've built our tool. And now we'll use it. We start again with how many moles of sodium sulfate? 0 0.0, 0 0.0327 moles of sodium sulfate. So now we use it. So now we've got 0 0.0327 moles of Na2SO4. Now we're going to think about that over one, so it's like a fraction. Multiply straight across. And then divide by everything on the bottom. Luckily, everything's a one down here. And what you do then, do the units cancel out? Let's find out. You got moles of sodium sulfate, moles of sodium sulfate, moles of oxygen, moles of oxygen. What are we left with? Atoms of oxygen. Is that what we wanted in this problem? Yes, it is. So now you get your calculator out. You do 0 0.0327 times 4 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, and you end up with. 7.87 times 10 to the 25th 
Now, 21st, atoms of oxygen. This probably just blew your mind. We will definitely talk about this later. These numbers are big, and I understand they're scary, but they're just numbers. And you can put them into a calculator, and you're going to be just fine. All right, guys, that's enough. Do what you can on these. See if you can make any progress here um, on these other problems. It's all pretty much the same. You have to make a plan, set up your sandwiches, multiply it through, and you should be okay. Um, trust me, we will go through this on Monday, but I really want to see you trying this stuff. Um, I think once you get a handle on these sandwiches, life is going to get easier for you in a lot of classes, not just in uh, chemistry. All right, you guys, thanks for uh, checking it out. Thanks for being nice to the sub. Um, see you Monday. Have a great weekend.